What's going on there, YouTube? Chilling with Twisted420 here once again, people. And we are back with another mobile tech-related video, okay? Now, people, please be gentle with me. I'm new to these things. I've been doing other reviews for a while, but I'm new to this. Last time, I probably should have mentioned the battery is one of the top five things I love. That was a mess up on my part, okay? And I want you guys to know something too, moving forward with this video. This is the global variant of the Mate 20X, okay? So there's a couple of hiccups. Now here's the thing, being the global variant, I use Straight Talk, I've been on Straight Talk like eight years, it's crazy, I know. <laughs> but uh, being, uh, being on Straight Talk, using AT&T Towers and everything, where I live here locally, I get LTE around town and stuff. Now I haven't been out of town too much to test out other areas, I'm sure I don't get as much LTE. But this is the Chinese variant, I'm hoping I can flash the global ROM onto it later on when they release it, time will tell. But yes people, <laughs> I had to get all that out of the way to say, today we are looking at five things I hate about the Huawei Mate 20X. Now, a lot of these are a bit of a reach, people, because this phone is pretty awesome. I got some other videos coming up on it, as well as some other phones coming in, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, uh, this phone's mostly great. So like I said, most of these things are a reach, but we must get things going, people, starting with number five, resolution. Now, to be honest, this isn't a super deal breaker. That's why it's listed at number five. But coming from like three or four 1440 piece uh, phones, <laughs> it is a bit noticeable. Now, this is an OLED screen, so that is a plus. The blacks and everything are good. But the resolution, uh, being such a big screen, the PPI is a little bit lower. The resolution is noticeable on some text and some icons when you're looking at stuff, especially if you come from something else with a higher resolution screen. And don't get me wrong, 1080p is still good, okay? 1080p is still good but it's a little bit lower than the standard for most premium devices out, so I must list it as number five. That's right, people, number four is the notch. Now this is just a little dewdrop notch. It's not as obtrusive as like the Pixel 3 XL and the iPhone and some of the other ones, but it's a notch nonetheless. And it is somewhat noticeable, especially if you zoom in and go full screen. Now you don't have to zoom in and it's still not too bad, but it's still a bit noticeable when you're going full screen, which is the way you want to enjoy such a massive phone. Now you do have an option in the software to go ahead and turn off the notch and put a little black bar up there, but you're losing some of that almost bezel-less full screen effect. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, this I, I tried to stay away from notches. I didn't want to have anything to do with them on my phone, but I sacrificed it for such an awesome phone, but still, I'm not too happy about the notch. That's right, people. Number three is the size. This is still, I mean, this is tablet. This is, I mean, the, the aspect ratio is different, but this is tablet territory. 7.2 inches is still huge. Now, I love huge phones. I've owned every single Note besides the Note 9 since the Note 1 because I have big hands and I like a big screen and a big phone. But I will say this one's <laughs> this one's pushing it. It, it. It's you can easily drop it if you're not careful. I got big hands and I still have to be careful. Luckily, I found a nice little case with a little pop socket, and I've been using it and it's made things better. But this is still a huge phone. It still fits in the pocket pretty fine. It's not too thick, but it's it's just it's a giant phone at the end of the day. It's basically a tablet. So yes, size is number three. Okay, okay, now I know it seems like probably not a major deal, not a super big deal, but almost every phone I've owned recently, uh, double tap the screen up, wake it, is the way to go. You still gotta hit, find the butt, pick it up, find the button on the side. Now it does have an option where you can pick it up and it shows the lock screen and you can swipe. But double tap when a phone's just laying on the table, something I loved about my, uh, my Googles and my Samsungs and other things. Phone's laying on the table, you just wanna check some shit, maybe some notifications, just give it a double tap, wakes up, you can check some stuff, leave it alone, double tap and sleep. And this phone doesn't have it. It's something simple, it's something that can be implemented through a software upgrade, but as it stands, it's not here and I miss it sorely. All right, people, the thing I've disliked the most, and I don't think it's just a Chinese thing because I've looked on the forums, people who have the global variant have had some of the same complaints, and that's notifications. And it's kind of a double-edged sword because the always on display, it's not like the, uh, the Google's always on display and some of the others where you get more information on the screen. It basically just gives you the time, the time of the day, and the battery percentage, and that's it. You don't get any notifications, no little Gmail icons, nothing there. All right, so that kind of sucks and you got to go into the phone and everything. You just don't know what's going on at a glance. Okay, that's one thing with always on display, but just notifications 
that that should work for certain apps they don't pop up gmail's not working that great uh my ring for my security cameras it doesn't pop up that great um it only notifies every once in a while certain apps and i go in through the settings i've seen some that you can uh that you can you can tweak the settings for notifications i went through i tweaked some but several apps are not giving out notifications and if they do they're late and it's 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 just an issue it's just an issue and it's unfortunate i think that's more of a huawei thing uh, that the notifications don't work persistently across every app like I do on my Google or anything else. And yeah, that's got to be my biggest complaint. It's, kinda, it's not a super big deal. You can still open it up and go look at stuff, go find what you're looking for. But if you're spoiled with always getting notifications for everything like you should, you're going to be a little upset with this guy. And I think that goes for both the global and the Chinese. Again, people, overall, this is still an absolutely great phone. Uh, it's fantastic. Playing games, watching videos, everything has been fantastic on it. Uh, the cameras are great. We're going to talk more about that later. But for the most part, this is a solid phone. But nothing is perfect, people. Nothing is perfect. And I know some of these might seem like nitpicks or little small gripes. But these are just some things that I've experienced after having this phone for a week or two, okay? Okay? So, yeah, we got more mobile tech videos on the way, people. I just wanted to update you guys with five things that I hate about my Huawei Mate 20X, all right? Links in the description of where I bought mine and some other stuff. You guys stay sexy out there. I am out.